Hi everyone, uh, I'm here to ask you one question and that is, are you using the debugger and why not? My name is Boris Lazinic and I'm back in team lead at TimeTech. Uh, TimeTech is a leading time and attendance uh, software as a service uh, provider, uh, which empowers everyone to use, so focus on their most valuable resource and that is time. In this talk, uh, I will cover uh, next things. This is prejudice or, or complaints about xDebug, uh, what things you can discover while using it, how debugger helped us, and one tweet. You will see it at the end. First, about complaints. There are three main complaints about xDebug, and those are that it's hard to install or configure, that it's faster to war dump things, or that uh, it's slow. Now I will go through uh, these three uh, complaints and try to prove it that that is not true and that actually there is much more benefit to using xDebug uh, than uh, everyone is thinking. First one is uh, hard to install or, or configure. Uh, this was true years ago and how hard was it? Uh, it was maybe two to four hours if you were really stuck. I had same problems, and but that was like uh, when I started using it, like uh, six, seven years ago, where we had a lot of uh, articles or blog posts that uh, are explaining how to do it, and everyone is explaining on different way, and you are always you need multiple sources to have it all right, and then the the people were stuck and could not uh, and didn't want to to continue using it. Uh, these days, I recommend the YouTube channel of the Derek, uh, the founder of the xDebug. Uh, he started to upload uh, like tutorials where he explains in like a five minutes to ten minutes uh, how to configure it for different environments or how to install it and showing the new features as well. So, in my opinion, this is not valid point anymore, and it's for me. I have a feeling it's like uh, the saying that we have for many more years, uh, like that PHP is dead, uh, and we are still using it, having uh, successful products built with it, uh, and it's uh, very well alive. That's how I also think about this one, because uh, the people that tried using the xDebug before and got stuck just uh, didn't want to give it one more try after some years. So in my opinion, this is solved, and uh, this is one complaint that I think it's not valid anymore. Um, the second one was it's faster to war dump things. For this one, I wanted to do a simple test. I wrote a small piece of code and I used war dump to check the value of the variable and uh, to check what it will output. This seems fast, and everyone will say that it's uh, that uh, it's their preferred way because they know what they are doing and so on. However, uh, this. Uh, Short example, took 11 seconds. On the other side, then I wanted to try how much time I need with the xDebug. The, with xDebug, I just needed to set a breakpoint where I want to, to see the variable value and to run the script. Uh, and for this, in total, I needed five seconds. So in my opinion, uh, yeah, it's clear uh, who is the winner here. And I, I need to say that this is very, very simple uh, example. And, um, but much more time we save in a way uh, on uh, like debugging uh, more deeply. Like people will often, like I would say in 95% of the cases, if I see someone that is using war dump, I'm pretty sure uh, that they are then uh, war dumping more variables if they want to check another thing, and then they're using more and more time uh, instead of uh, simply putting the breakpoint and using and going into the uh, code and checking the values. Also, not to, not to say when you need to go into nested functions and to check the values in there, uh, it's much, much faster. And one more thing that I uh, also use often in the bug, in, in the bugging session, you can always use uh, uh, evaluate expressions uh, feature where you can, while uh, in the bugging session, to uh, try out the new code or basically to write new parts of the code on the go and just save it and use it. So it saves much more time. So in my case, so in, the, in my opinion, uh, is it really faster? I'm not so sure about that. So I think for me, this is also checked and uh, it's not valid anymore. And the last one, it's slow. Uh, yeah, it slows things down. That is, I mean, that is also uh, natural because 
uh, it's uh, using a lot of more code to debug and to profile things, so it's, it's like that. But uh, you need to know how to use it and then it will not slow you down because if you configure it to start with a trigger, for example, when you are using the uh, when you are running the PHP script, script for a, from a console, you will always prepend it with a trigger like this one, xdebug session equals PHP storm, and then he will only start the debugging session. Same is for, from the web, web browser. You can use the extension xdebug helper and just turn it on when you need it. You don't need to, to, turn it on, to have it turned on for every request. And of course, then uh, it's only uh, running when you need it. And there is one more uh, thing when people are saying about that is that um, if you're having long running script, um, for example, that takes one hour, you don't want to start debugging session because if your script is uh, taking one hour and you start a debugging, se debugging session, it will take maybe two hours or three, I don't know. But uh, in the new version, uh, <coughs> in the xdebug 3.1, there is a new feature also that is already explained uh, on YouTube by the founder. Uh, that you can, for example, if you need only to debug something on the very end of your script, you can uh, take an xdebug function and only when the code reaches that point, he will start the, the debugging session. So you are not uh, uh, losing any time waiting for the debugging of whole script. So in my opinion, this is also solved. Now I will talk uh, what else we can do with it and, uh, and learn because this was only uh, about debugging, uh, but there are much more useful things that you can uh, do with xdebug, uh, and that is profiling. Here I made a small example, a uh, small uh, part of code, which is having four functions. Basically, first one, first two are not doing anything, the second one as well, and the third one is generating array of 10,000 items. I've run the profiler on this one. It's a really simple one. I just want to show you the interface. Uh, this one is from PHP Storm, but you can also, uh, so in PHP Storm, you can uh, load the snapshot of the xdebug profiler, but as well, you can uh, use uh, cache grind software uh, also to, to, to read those files if you prefer it. I use both, sometimes this, sometimes that. In this profiling, uh, the most important thing uh, for you when you are looking at it is own time and own memory because you are interested which parts of the code are taking the most time and taking the most memory because there you want to focus and to improve things. In this, in this example, we can see that uh, generate array function, which actually did something, uh, is using almost all the time and all the memory. So that's how you read this uh, profiler. Another example, um, what I discovered while using xdebug and profiling in general is that um, if we have some example like this, if we are having the function which generates array uh, and we have a function that process array but actually doesn't do anything in this case, uh, simply by running uh, two different, uh, these two different examples, uh, it will use the different, uh, it will have the different memory usage. In the first example, we are generating an array of uh, 100,000 uh, items and we are processing it, but it's not doing anything actually. And in this case, uh, the memory usage will be 4 megabytes. In this case, I, I didn't show you the profiler because it doesn't make sense. I just uh, dumped the memory usage in PHP. And in second case, if you are uh, doing basically, if you are working with same number of uh, items, but you are using uh, chunks, so you are running in for each like a five times uh, to generate 20,000 items and, and process it. The script will use uh, at the time when the, the code finishes much less memory, like one and something megabytes, and the peak usage was uh, uh, two, two megabytes. So here we can, this is a really small example again, but in, the, in, the, in your code, if you have uh, such examples, it can save you a few, a uh, few megabytes, or I don't know, in my, in my example was from 130 megabytes to 90 megabytes, uh, one part of the code where I had uh, huge arrays and where I used the chunking. Uh, another example, again, with arrays, um, we have the function uh, process array, which is now changed just to add one more item to, the, uh, to the, that array. Um, in first example, uh, or both examples are generating uh, 100,000 uh, items. 
and we want to add new item uh, to that array. Uh, in the first example, this script uh, used 8 megabytes, and in the second case, this script used 4 megabytes. There is one small difference in these two parts of code, and that is the in the second example, we have passed the array with a reference. So in the first example where the script was using 8 megabytes, if you are passing uh, to the method uh, array uh, and then want to add another item on array, on array uh, the PHP will copy the previous array and then add a new item. So it's using uh, double the amount of memory. But if you are doing the same and passing the array with a reference, then he will just add that item to original array. So this is something that uh, maybe you are not uh, taking care of too much because if you are not having huge arrays, it will, uh, it doesn't matter. But if you are having huge array and passing from the function to the function and in each function you change something to array, keep in mind that it's copying the array all the time and that you can have memory problems there. Usually people will not check that if they don't hit, hit the memory limit and then they, they will decide to profile the script and see what is happening. How the how the bugger helped us? So I didn't say in the in the in the slides for profiling. I used very uh, very simple example. Uh, but once when we were profiling some requests, we have discovered that there is a function taking thirty percent time uh, of the time of the request, which is not needed at all. So we were profiling some uh, simple endpoint, and yeah, at the end we found out that thirty percent of the time uh, we were doing something that we don't need. And with this, only this small change and small profiling, quick, quick profiling, we uh, gained 30% uh, of time for those. We have used chunking, as I said. Yeah, I have used it uh, in, in practice as well. Uh, learned a lot about legacy and least touch code. Um, when I'm working on something uh, that I didn't work before with or, or some legacy parts that I didn't work with, uh, for me, it's always easier to uh, start a debugging session and then go through that code and see what is happening in there. I can go without xdebug, I can go to the functions and to understand the code, but if I see in the debugging session what are the approximate uh, values of those variables, what are the ty types of variables, then I can understand it better. So I use this uh, when I have uh, a task to uh, introduce new workflow in our OAuth authorization and where I used the uh, one workflow that we had, see how it's working, and then I figured out how I can make it work for the second case that I need to implement. And in general, debugger helped every team member with regular debugging coding tasks. They would never consider not using it, using it in future. Whenever I talk with uh, team members or the, or the developers from other departments that are using Xdebug, uh, they would never start a project without it because if you if you are used to it, you know how much benefit you have, and it's simply like that. How I came to uh, to idea for this presentation is that last year there was one tweet that uh, like made a lot of uh, heated discussion uh, on Twitter and the Reddit uh, because it was a bit uh, yeah some people got uh, got offended. And that was uh, this one, PHP developers that don't use xdebug for debugging are amateurs. This was a bit, uh, I think the, the founder of xdebug knew what he would cause with this tweet, so that's why he did it, and it was a very good move. However, in the, in the follow-up of this tweet, he uh, gave another point to it and really explained it uh, in a more, uh, in nicer words, so that everyone is uh, happy. And it was PHP developers that insist on not using xdebug for debugging are doing themselves themselves no favor, which I fully agree with this, and uh, that's why I'm talking about that, this because uh, I think that is very important that everyone give, gives it a try and see how much they will benefit. So, if only one one developer uh, that is listening to this presentation uh, starts to use it, I will be very happy. And uh, I know that is one small step for his career but, career, but important, and it will help him a lot. And I would say thank you. <laughs>